Let's get back into the financial services industry, by the way, because the South African Reserve Bank has uh, launched a new study report that provides facts and figures into the country's banking and the payment system. Now, the report highlights the flow of money within the South African populace, including other forms of uh, payment. Let, let's listen to these excerpts of industry uh, uh, experts uh, at the report launch. Surprisingly, in terms of the um, transactions that people recorded, that they uh, what what they spent money on, um, we had classifications in terms of what you what you spend money on, but there were also option for other, and there were some interesting um, uh, transactions listed there. The the point I also want to make about that is regarding the recording of cash. Is that cash as a, I can give you a hundred rand, you can pay for something else or give it to someone else. And none of that would be recorded in a, in a, in a, in a formal system. So there's a part of that, which, which forms part of the dominance of, of, of cash. Um, and, how those we 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 didn't measure in terms of you have a budget and what did you spend it on we measured what did you spend it on and what was that value and that cumulative is what we looked at and i'm i'm in part addressing your your question as well is that it wasn't um in, in either of the of of the studies was a was a case of if this was the money how much did you spend on it we had an in indication in SEPC, and we measured it based on number of transactions versus value of transactions. So how many times and how much do you spend at each of those? So you get both components, and you can then use both as indicative from SEPC, and then look at the transaction data in DCPC predominance of debit card payments. Uh, I, I really thought that was notable. Uh, and the divergence, as Mavis pointed out, between uh, the use of debit cards and credit cards. Um, so I think that the usage of cash was not as big a surprise. The results on day of the week, time of month, and so on are, are fairly similar across countries and um, you know follow uh, typical patterns, I would say. Uh, but the debit cards are very widely, very widely used in South Africa across the population. So it, it wasn't, you know, only um, limited to high income populations. And, and that was, uh, I, I thought, a, a reflection of, uh, of course, there has to be the infrastructure uh, around the, uh, the whole geography, because this is, this, this is true, you know, across geographies and across uh, income groups and demographic groups. So I was impressed with that. The question is, you know, why do you want, we've got to moderate expectations, but also not entirely uh, uh, create studies that are not useful. Why do you want LSM? For what purpose? When you're doing an income and expenditure survey, it's very important that you understand how different income details, consumption structure, consumption basket looks different, low income details to high income details. That's a, a, the, the objective here. The question is, what is the objective of the study? And you know, you want broad trends about why different people use different payment instruments. How much of that is conditioned by their income status? How much of that is conditioned by where they happen to be? Uh, and so on. So, so I think that there are many other studies uh, on all sorts of things, but we must not over, we mustn't exaggerate what we think we can get from this study. And I'd like to prod Jamie to talk a bit about how the, the studies were used in the context of, uh, of, of the U.S. The U.S. Um, promulgated uh, very similar studies, also with the exact same names, uh, the Survey of Consumer Payment Choice and the Diary of Consumer Payment Choice, which are uh, conducted uh, now periodically at the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. And the uh, purpose is exactly the same as uh, the purpose of these studies. And um, this is one of the things that I think is so impressive about this study is the data quality here uh, I think uh, 
please don't quote me on this, <laughs> exceeds that of the United States because the, the tremendous um, effort that was made to do in-person surveys with uh, a very few number of uh, uh, respondents per survey personnel. It was just, you know, very high quality. And um, the difference was that uh, another difference between the surveys that are conducted in the United States is that all the questions were designed uh, systemically for South Africa. You know, they it wasn't a, a copy and paste. Instead, uh, uh, you know, various people on the cross-functional team, Jan Shirley, who's in the um, audience here today, um, and uh, went through and decided what are the questions that are uh, appropriate for for the population here. So, um, but again, as um, uh, you know, Deputy Governor Kasim uh, points out, this study is a, and as Jan said, a benchmark for how many payments of different types are used by different populations in South Africa. And I think that information is a starting point for all sorts of things. Uh, I'll just mention one thing and then I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on. Uh, Mavis pointed out that the, the cash payments are of a certain size, 100 and some, uh, 160 eight rand or something like that. And the debit card payments are like 700 rand. So one can infer just from that information, one can begin to infer that there are different characteristics of those payments. And some of those questions were asked, uh, for example, security with cash. Um, as you're making larger and larger cash payments, you have to hold more and more cash in your pocket and the security becomes more of an issue. Mm -hmm. So that reflects a cost of using cash mm -hmm. that varies with the size of the payment that you're, you're making. Um, and uh, debit card payments are, are more convenient for large payments. They're probably lower uh, variable cost, to use a technical term, for debit cards for high payment values. And so this is an interesting relationship that, again, the industry can use when they are thinking about how to deploy payment systems that have different cost characteristics, different security characteristics. And we don't see the, the cost numbers in the survey, of course, but we see the result of everyone trying to decide what's the best payment to use in a particular case. And that gives us our... our uh, overall results in the survey. So I think I'm post question as to whether the study measured as in the circulation and the number of times as in the, uh, you know, the payment method as it moves around, that we would not really have been able as in to, to do. So what we were certainly able to do is the element that you're asking around as to where uh, that payment method is utilized. So we are able to um, as uh, we indicated, um, for example, with the prominent use of that payment method as in on groceries, we are able as in to see uh, that is, is either being spent as in on school fees, um, uh, on rent, et cetera. So that as in we're able as in to, but this particular as in study to understand uh, that phenomenon of how that cash as in moves around, uh, that is not as in one that we've, not, we've really seen as in, in the other jurisdictions as well, but um, open as in to, as we uh, refine further as in, in the coming years to see as in how can something like that as in be catered for. Is there anyone to add? If I, if I may add to that, I think the way I visualize that as I, as I work through it is, it's almost as if cash is the ocean and there are some major rivers, which is the debit card side. And then as this is a benchmark study or inaugural study as a benchmark, it is seeing these other payments beginning to trickle in um, to, to that overall pool of transactions. And that is therefore moving forward, it would really be interesting to see how those other payment methods start um, almost taking share away from what cash is currently as the as as the dominant um, payment payment method, and I think the the. Uh, 
The challenge perhaps is we, we, we talk about a virtual card and in some cases a virtual card you can also utilize through your banking app. Now to the consumer, it would be, well, I've used my banking app versus otherwise it could be known as, as, as a virtual card. So those are the kind of complications with as these payment methods start gaining traction and how they are utilized and how the consumer perceives them to be what it is that they used. Um, that and and there are interesting transactions that came out of someone who used a sending money like a remittance type of transaction to send money to her investor, and the investor would then invest the money in some in some platform. So those are the kind of dynamics that wouldn't really be the almost intuitive um, assumption from a policy or from a development angle in terms of what these different payment methods may be used for or how they are perceived to be what it is that I did. Mm -hmm.